Hello again. Um, so last week I talked about the newest weird fiction that I've been reading and this week I shall discuss some of the oldest weird fiction I read that I hadn't already read. I began all the way back to ancient Mesopotamia to the first ever recorded piece of fiction, I guess you could call it. Uh, which is Gilgamesh and it's often regarded, it says here, as the earliest surviving great work of literature. It's bizarre and exciting to read something so old. I, you can google it and you can read it online which, you know, seeing as it was written on stone tablets uh, or clay tablets, pardon me, um, you know, you, sh you should be able to just read it online for free. Um, and some of the descriptions are, they sound like something straight from somebody's subconscious, you know, which, which I guess they are, but they're quite dreamlike. For example, uh, there's a man who um, lives with uh, wild goats, I think it is, and eats grass with them. And once he sleeps with a woman, the goats reject him and he then has to join the world of people, which is kind of like Adam and Eve that occurred a little later, I suppose. Um, and also there's a description, if I remember rightly, there's a description of like the evil old man of the forest who is described as his face is like entrails or something like that. And actually, apparently there's a version where um, he's seen as the protagonist protagonist yeah and Gilgamesh is seen as the antagonist so you know it's an interesting um look at different viewpoints from you know such an early era um so yeah on the one hand it's it's quite exciting to read something so far back in history but on the other hand as a piece of fiction to read and I'm really sorry for my Philistinism, but it was a bit of a slog. Um, just, you know, like, I don't know, I, I feel kind of bad saying it. I know I should say, oh, I really enjoyed it and it was fascinating, and it was fascinating, but to, as something to sit down and read, I had to really kind of make myself do it, so, sorry. But I do recommend it as a historical thing you should go and look at it because it is part of history. Okay. And next I read, someone recommended it to me. Uh, I'm very sorry, but um, you know who you are. Look on um, last week's video to see who it was. Recommended the uh, Egypt, one of the Egyptian texts that uh, is found on the pyramids. And it's called the Cannibal Hymn and it was inside the pyramid of King Unas, or Unis, as in one of the translations. And um, many of the pyramid texts relate to how that particular pharaoh or whoever related to the gods. And um, there are some, you know, ones about friendship and so on. But in this one, it's very dark and strange. It talks about bones, it talks about um, other gods who kind of wrangle the gods for the king and um, tie them up so he can eat them and he devours them and it talks about what parts of them he eats in the morning and the afternoon and at night and um, I found um, a really good video that someone had made um, of them reading this text and I'm going to put it in the description because I really found it fascinating. But it, you get a real impression of perhaps King Unus was like a tough person, it was a, you know, you, you get a real kind of Ozymandias type vibe from him and, um, you know, ingesting the gods was a, a way of um, consuming and uh, taking on their strength, you know, it's not a, an idea that's um, new to this. Yeah, it's, it's very um, visceral. Watch the video that I link below. And the next one, Flatland. Flatland, A Romance of Many Dimensions by Edwin 
Abbott. Abbott. Edwin Abbott Abbott. Is that real? I don't know. Is that a mistake? Not sure, sorry. Uh, it was published in 1884. Another one I really didn't like. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, it's a satire of social conventions in Victorian Britain. So to read from that aspect is, you know, um, I can imagine, I can see why people would find it very interesting. It just was a bit waffly, you know, I'm sorry. It went into, the beginning of it was just going into so much detail about who was what shape and how is this world different from our world and I know I get that uh, people weren't perhaps as aware of things like that as they are in writing today but um, I really did make an effort I really did but I just found it very boring uh, but it's, pro it's probably a good read for someone who wants to know a little bit more about how some people might have felt about the class system for example but I didn't get that far I'm sorry yeah I didn't like it now the next two I really did like um, King in Yellow by Robert W Chambers obviously quite a well-known one um, was published in 1895 oh it's really eerie I didn't expect it to be but um, it's a collection of short stories and it's the first four or five I'm not sure if it's four or five ending in the yellow sign which are related to this particular story, which is that there is a play that exists called The King in Yellow. And anyone who reads it is um, affected health-wise or mentally. And, um, you know, terrible things happen to them. They either go mad or they die or something. A lot of the characters are Parisian bohemians. Uh, the first one is set in not the 1920s as a kind of dystopian view of the future almost the 20s obviously being the future at the time and is set in america and that is a really good insight into delusion it's written really well you know from the point of view of someone who is suffering from that either suffering from a delusion or it really is something that's happening. You, you know, you never find out and it's very subtle and apparently he inspired Lovecraft to never quite name the things that are happening to kind of leave as much of the dark stuff to people's imagination as possible. And I, you know, to me it kind of takes the same approach as perhaps Robert Aikman in um, things aren't fully explained you have to kind of work stuff out for yourself so I don't want to give too much away but um, the last story in that section particularly the, the yellow sign I was really disturbed like it was really creepy <laughs> um, so yeah uh, the king in yellow I love it it's amazing uh, read it and finally, Hellscreen, Ryanosuke Akutagawa. Uh, it was first published 1918 as a serialisation in two newspapers and it has since been combined. Um, it's a kind of exploration of a man who is he going to prize art above his human relationships? Um, he's asked by a lord to paint a screen with uh, scenes from hell and he says that he can't paint what he hasn't seen. So all of the depictions of torture he has to reenact somehow. And um, the end is a kind of ultimate uh, test of you know how far are, how far will he and the lord go. And what I found quite interesting about it is that I feel like there's another layer to it where, um, again, without wanting to give too much away, um, it's from the point of view of a servant, so it's someone looking in, and I feel like there are things that he sees that he 
doesn't want to admit to or uh, there's at least one or two scenes or at least some motives behind what's going on that he doesn't want to admit or that he doesn't realise as in what what the Lord could be up to, what his reasoning is for this. And uh, there's a scene where a girl comes in, I'm not going to tell you anymore, a girl comes in and she's all like flushed and uh, her kimono's out of place and you know we obviously know that something's happened but he, but the servant kind of brushes it off like nothing so there's more to the story and i think once you read it it will make sense the lord is not the wonderful person who's only doing it to teach this artist a lesson as the servant thinks he is okay so yeah uh fascinating stuff occasionally a little boring but yeah have a look for all these things tell me other things find other things yourself read all the things okay goodbye